Before we start today's show, we want to congratulate two of the other MJ Bulls podcasts on their one-year anniversary. Over the last 12 months, Hemp Barons and the Deadhead Cannabis Show have established themselves as premier cannabis podcasts, and we're proud that Larry Mishkin and Jim Marty, the host of the Deadhead Cannabis Show, and Joy Beckerman, the host of Hemp Barons, trusted MJ Bulls to produce their shows and look forward to another great year. If you're not already listening, check out Hemp Barons and the Deadhead Cannabis Show at mjbulls.com, iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you're listening now. Just last year, weren't putting any focus on direct-to-consumer marketing. Well, now, as COVID has changed the retail foot traffic across all industries, cannabis consumers are using online menus and picking up products curbside. You don't have the same uh, reliability of putting all of your eggs in, in the bud tender basket to educate consumers on the value of your products or the differentiating factors of the products on the shelf. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Cannabis and Corona Report. I think you're really going to enjoy today's show because we're going to talk about another way that cannabis has gained ground during the COVID-19 pandemic. Chris Streve from Programetrics is here to talk about cannabis CBD advertising. Chris, welcome to the show. Hey, Dan. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk to you because, uh, you know, as we talked about before the show began, I'm kind of a dinosaur. So, and, and as I was preparing for this interview, I got more and more excited because, like most people, I just assumed that being in the cannabis box meant that we were precluded from certain types of advertising, which you will soon learn couldn't be further from the truth. But before we debunk that myth, let's take a step back so we are all on the same page. Can you explain programmatic advertising and, and maybe give us a couple of examples of how it's used? Totally. So I'll give you kind of an example of the evolution of digital advertising over the years uh, using a mainstream example. So about 10 years ago, if you were Gatorade, you had to call ESPN and say, hey, ESPN, uh, I'm Gatorade. I want to put an ad on your homepage because I want to target sports fans that browse content on ESPN. Well, that's not very efficient and effective uh, to be able to call 50 or 100 websites to be able to get your ad placed on their content. Programmatic advertising uh, was developed to automate the media planning and buying process across thousands of sites, apps, and platforms, allowing brands a more efficient and effective way to reach their audience at scale. Uh, in cannabis, uh, this uh, shift to automated media planning and buying has started to occur over the last year or so. Okay. Um, whereas two, three years ago, cannabis brands were confined to placing digital banners on High Times, Dope, Culture, and also mobile ads on Weed Maps and even Leafly. The, the ecosystem has changed, and now cannabis brands can run automated campaigns across thousands of sites to reach a broader audience online. Okay. And you, and you can go very, very granular with your advertising, be in specific areas or follow specific types of people. And you know, I think I read on your website that you said, like, you know, if you wanted to get a message to people that frequent a certain dispensary, you can do that, which just sort of blows my mind. Yeah, it's the reality today, you know, is that consumers are taking in content from various devices and across different platforms all day, every day. And the goal of a marketer is to reach your audience, your target market, your desired customers on the devices where they consume, you know, relevant content to your products or services. The reality for cannabis brands is that the cannabis consumer is evolving. 
a cannabis consumer does not just live their daily digital lives on cannabis and, and pot blogs. Mm -hmm. They are moms with kids who read cooking content and, and lifestyle magazines. They're athletes who use cannabis and CBD as a wellness product. And so it's important for cannabis brands to understand that their audience than just the household cannabis publications that we we know and love and, and, and frequent as cannabis business owners on a daily, weekly basis. But the digital ecosystem is much broader yeah. uh, and we need technology to grant us access to those types of consumers and users and to target known cannabis customers wherever they, they live their digital lives. Just give our listeners kind of a perspective on you know, the rest of the world, let's a non-cannabis industry, like in 2019, what percentage of non-cannabis companies' annual budget was spent on programmatic advertising? So a bit more broadly, in 2019, digital advertising, so all forms of digital, surpassed traditional advertising. <laughs> Whoa. So TV, radio, it was the first year, 2019, that digital surpassed traditional. You have a lot of radio advertisements that are shifting to digital audio and auras and Spotify's of the world. You have a lot of TV advertising that's transitioning from regular broadcast to streaming TV devices like Hulu. And obviously, with the continued you know, increase in usage of our mobile devices, digital advertising spend for the mainstream, plans to be about 75% of the overall market by 2023. So when you think about the discrepancy in cannabis and to all the cannabis business owners out there, maybe looking at your, your marketing budget and saying, oh gosh, I'm spending 5 or 10% of my total budget on digital. When the rest of the CPG and retail and e-commerce world is generally spending upwards of 50-60% of their total budget on digital advertising spend. That's crazy. That is crazy that we're so far behind. I, I, you know, I suspect it has a lot to do with Google and Facebook not allowing cannabis ads. And I'm assuming that you know, because we didn't feel like there were other options, cannabis companies didn't feel like there were other options, uh, they just didn't even try. And then, bam, COVID hits. How did COVID-related changes force cannabis businesses to start re-exploring and re recreating their marketing tactics? It's a great question. It's a very interesting kind of situation that we're, we're finding ourselves in supporting various cannabis brands and cannabis retailers across the country. I'd say six months ago, the answer that we would get, start with brands in particular, uh, products on shelves. Uh, their answer to why they aren't ready to advertise online is because, well, we don't sell products online. And so we have to rely on bud tenders and we have to rely on retail education to be able to sell our products because we can't sell direct to consumer. Brands uh, just last year weren't putting any focus on direct to consumer marketing. Well, now... Uh, as COVID has changed the retail foot traffic across all industries, cannabis consumers are using online menus and picking up products curbside. All right. You don't have the same reliability of putting all of your eggs in the bud tender basket to educate consumers on the value of your products or the differentiating factors of the products on the shelves. Similarly, retailers about six months ago, many of them had an online menu just to keep up with the Joneses, right? to say that you have an online menu, but they never really marketed the online menu or thought that that was a scalable way to increase their business. Mm -hmm. Well, the retail stores that have doubled down on online menu usage and curbside pickup during COVID have been able to gain market share. I know it for a fact. Wow. And the retail brands that didn't have an online menu or a digital ecosystem by which they could connect with customers they're running to the duchies of the world right now to make sure that they can digitize their business for those customers that may be a little wary of coming into the source. Man, isn't it crazy? Like that was an unintended consequence. Nobody would have expected cannabis businesses to transition their marketing just because of this crisis. 
Today's show is made possible by the generous support of our sponsors, like Sension Pixel, the cannabis and CBD hemp industry's leading marketing and design agency. For over three years, cannabis and CBD hemp companies have trusted Sension Pixel with all their social media management, influencer marketing, print, packaging, and web design, blog, and SEO needs. Go to ascensionpixel.com or click on the link in the show notes to learn how Sension Pixel's hireable, all-in-one marketing and design department can amplify your company's communication. You know, I'm comfortable buying radio and TV and billboards and magazines, but I gotta admit, when I look at your website and I see all the advertising options like display, mobile, video, digital, connect TV, social, native, I get overwhelmed. I mean, there's just so much. How do you help cannabis brands design an effective campaign incorporating all these new channels and still getting them approved on all the channels. Yeah, it's difficult. You know, the the digital landscape changes every week, it seems like. I think the important thing for cannabis brands to realize and recognize is that you don't have to be engaging with your customers every single minute of the day on every device and spend a ton of of money across all of those different channels that you mentioned. Okay. It's important to know who is your audience? What are the demographics? Looking at Google Analytics of your website to understand a bit more about who are my consumers? What do they look like? Where are they coming from? And then matching those audience personas or those target audiences with the appropriate channels online. As an example, if you have a younger audience, you may skew more of your advertising dollars towards mobile or connected TV for the cord cutters out there or the millennials that are our younger target audience. You also may decide that you want to focus more on traditional desktop laptop advertising and targeting an older demographic. I think digital advertising gives brands the best potential to reach their audience at a more granular level and not just saying 21 plus in Seattle is my audience. Yeah. Uh, no, it's 21 plus with the high household income skewing 70% male and 30% female on specific sites, on specific devices at certain times during the day, you can get that granular. And the whole purpose of that granular targeting and technology is to efficiently spend the budget that you have on your exact desired audience. And with cannabis brands having very lean marketing dollars, and I don't see that changing, it's very important to make sure that you have you know, the right channels and the right audiences that you're reaching as efficiently as possible. Yeah, it's like lasering in on the target versus trying to hit it with a shotgun. I mean, I remember radio advertisement where we were buying stations that were the strongest in women 18 to 34. I mean, talk about a big demographic. I mean, looking back at it, it seems so inefficient. So let me just jump forward here. And before we wrap up, I want, there's one thing I have on my notes that I definitely wanted to talk about, and that is CBD. Now it's legal, but I keep hearing that companies are having a hard time getting ads on Facebook or Google. Why is this? Well, it's because Facebook and Google don't have very clearly defined uh, rules and regulations. There are certain companies that have topical products that in the guidelines from Google and Facebook can be approved. The difficulty for CBD brands when it comes to Google and Facebook is that even if you get your ads approved, you can't target cannabis or CBD keywords. You can't target cannabis or CBD shoppers or consumers. You can barely even put CBD in the content or in the copy of your ad. One of the examples that I use is what if Nike couldn't show pictures of their shoes and in their messaging, they said, buy foot coverings now. (laughs) That's kind of what CBD brands are facing when trying to advertise on Facebook and Google because of all of the restrictions. Now, CBD, as it relates to COVID, is really interesting as well, because 
a lot of CBD brands put all of their eggs in retail distribution. That's not a great business model right now. So many CBD brands are focusing now on building out their e-commerce platforms and selling direct to consumers. And the best way to drive traffic to your website, the best way to drive sales for your online platforms is through digital marketing. Yeah. Um, so that same shift in focus to digital is occurring in CBD as well. And to add to that, they can also track their sales and to track the effectiveness of their campaigns because they're actually able to make sales online. So that would be a huge benefit. Yeah, that's that's the big area with, with cannabis that hasn't been solved yet, right? Is being able to attribute campaign performance or marketing spend to sales in-store and through delivery platforms. And, you know, the company that can over time crack that code is going to be the one that's able to provide the most value. But change is coming and, and change to marketing and advertising is always evolving and changing. And I think cannabis brands who understand the power of digital and make that switch and transition and focus to online advertising are going to be the companies that are going to be able to separate themselves during this time of, of a lot of uncertainty, that would be my number one recommendation is to take a look at all of the aspects of your business and understand how to transform different portions of your business to be more digitally accepted and digital forward. And people are thinking, geez, how do I do this? I mean, we'll have all of Chris's contact information in the show notes, so you can just follow up with him. I'm sure he'll, want to, he'll talk to you more about this, but this is the future. This is the future. <laughs> it's time to move away from putting ads on the side of buses and billboards and be like the rest of the advertising world. Chris, I appreciate you being on the show today. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. 